So we covered Linux permissions. Now let's go over to the Windows side and understand, you know, just how can we interpret the different permissions here? First of all, what are the different permissions on a Windows system? And what does that look like? How can we enumerate that as an attacker, of course? Now we're going to start with a Windows system here with GUI access, right? Now we will get into the strictly command line access part of it as well so that you can still be able to enumerate this, whether you just have command line access or if you have full on GUI access. Now, let me just show you the lab setup that I have, right? So if I run net users, these are all the users on this computer here. These are all local user accounts, by the way. So we have self-made user and test user. So if I look at some of the groups, right? So if I do a net local group administrators, and I'm logged into the self-made user right now. So if I look at the administrators, we see self-made is a administrator and the test user is not. So if we look at the users group, we'll see test user there. Now you notice that self-made is also a user account. So it's still a member of users as well. But this user that we are, that's the current one we're logged in as in this uh, CMD shell here. So you see here in the small lettering, as it says, running as desktop test user. So we're test user right now here. And over here, we are the self-made user. And the way that I was able to spawn the shell, by the way, is uh, just using a simple run as command in Windows. So that way I can have both of them here to demo this. And along the way, as you're leveling up, as you're learning this stuff, eventually you will come to the point where you're ready to start applying for jobs. So definitely check out the description below for the top 10 pen testing interview questions you need to know to absolutely ace that next interview. So without further ado, let's get right into the content here. So let's start with the GUI access, right? Let's take a look at some folders. So... One of the folders that you're probably familiar with is your, your home folder, right? So if we go into C drive users, we can see the home folder is corresponding to each user. Let's go into the self-made folder. And as you might imagine, only we should have access to this. So if I right click, I go to properties, we can see in the, under the security tab, we can see what all permissions are set up. So by default, because I didn't change any of the permissions from the defaults here, we see that the self-made user has full control, right? And we see that administrators also have full control as well. And if you notice, there are no permissions for this test user. And, you know, that is by design, right? We don't want other users shouldn't have access to our user folder, right? So... Let's uh, just dive into these permissions and what they mean. Of course, there are also system permissions. So if you're running as a system account, uh, in this case, it will have full control. But let's just kind of step through these permissions and understand what they are, right? Because they are different than Linux. So Linux is a lot more, it's a lot more simple in terms of the different permissions you can have. You can have read, you can have write, you can have execute. With Windows, there's a lot more permissions that we're dealing with. So full control means you have all the permissions below it, basically. Now, modify means that you're able to modify a file. So that is different than write. See, you have write down here and you have modify. So with modify, I can change any file in that folder, but I cannot, uh, I cannot delete that file. Okay, so I can't delete files, but I, I can modify them. So that's what the modify permission is. So read and execute is pretty much what you would think of as execute, but it has to be able to read it to be able to execute. So they list it as um, read and execute. Now there's also this permission here, list folder contents, which is different than read permissions. So with the list folder contents, that allows you to do uh, a DIR or an LS uh, if you're using PowerShell, the PowerShell alias, a GCI, <laughs> if you're using a different PowerShell alias, right? It lets you see the contents of what is in the uh, the folder. So that is an, a permission all on its own. And uh, then of course you have your standard read permission, which is can I read the files? Can I read the, uh, the content that's in that folder? right? Can I actually read those files? And then write permissions allows you to create files in that folder, to delete files in that folder, and, uh, and so on. 
And I could even go into advanced settings here and I can see even more granularly. Now the GUI allows me to change this. It's You see the little shield icon there. It's going to prompt me for UAC. So I'm going to have to, um, I am actually running on a, an elevated account. So it automatically get, you know, signed me in there. But if I wasn't, then I would have to enter in the administrator username, password in order to do that. But we see here permissions, especially for the three users that are listed here. Um, now I can add, so I could try to add the test user and give it certain permissions. We'll play around with modifying them a little bit later here, but we could easily edit any of these permissions here just by checking and unchecking a box. So like I said here earlier, full control means you have all these permissions. So if I just check this box, we see it automatically checks all of these. So that's just showing you that there. Now, this is how you would enumerate it if you had GUI access and also just to show you guys what this looks like in Windows. But if we want to, if we only have command line access and we want to be able to check for this, we're going to actually have to upload a binary from Windows Sys Internals called Access Check. Now I've already uploaded it to the server. So if I go to, uh, let's, let's start this off with my self-made account and then we'll jump over to test user here in a second. So if I go into my documents folder, I have this binary here, accesscheck.exe. We're just gonna go ahead and run that one. So I can automatically look in any directory to see what level of access I have. So basically just the same thing we saw in the GUI, I can see that from the command line. If I run accesscheck.exe, and this is important, you wanna include this except EULA to accept the license agreement automatically if you only have command line access. Because if you don't provide this flag, what it's going to do is on the actual server, there's going to be this the uh, end user license agreement that you're going to have to click in the GUI to accept it uh, in order for this command to complete. Now, obviously, if you don't have GUI access, you can't click the button for it to proceed. But what this access check allows you to do is provide this slash except EULA where it'll automatically do that and you will see the output of this command. Now, I will also note that if you're using a newer version of the access check binary, this option I believe is no longer available. So you want an older version of the access check exe binary. And uh, there's different things you could Google out there to get this. This particular binary I got from a Try Hack Me room, uh, the Tiberius Windows Privilege Escalation room. He had it in the tools folder there. So that's a place that you can go to get this version, this older version of Access Check. But I'm sure there's a ton of other places you could go to get it as well. If you guys know of any, you know, feel free to drop it down in the comment section below. But let's just go ahead and check a directory here. So we do dash D. And uh, we'll just look in the current directory. So now we saw what we saw through the GUI earlier, right? We see that um, NT Authority System has read and write and read and write on administrators, read and write on self-made. Now, if you notice, it's not listing the more granular permissions. This binary just gives you like um, read, write pretty much. So it is not perfect. We're not getting as much information out of it as we were from the GUI, but still this is useful information to know. So we have write access to this as well as read, right? So we should be able to read any files and write to them. So let's try to write a file, right? If we do the echo command and we say uh, just some random data into file.txt, we saw that completed successfully. We should be able to read that file as well because we have read permissions. We'll see if that is the case. And uh, we are able to read that file. So there you go. We have uh, read and write permissions on this directory. Now let's go ahead and check something that we probably don't have write permissions to, possibly don't. Let's check the Windows System 32. There we go. Now we see a lot more fine-grained access control here. So we have the trusted installer account has a uh, service account has read and write permissions. System is read and write. Administrator has read and write. Users only have read. Now I should be able to read and write because I'm part of the administrators group as the self-made user. Remember that's the user account that we are right now. So if I try to echo some data into, into C, 
Windows System 32. Uh, we'll call it test.txt. Uh, we see we get an access denied on that. So the reason for that is this command prompt here is not an administrator command prompt. And this is the UAC coming into play here. Now, it's not going to automatically prompt you for UAC, but if I were to launch a new command prompt, I right-click and say run as administrator. Now, this is an elevated command prompt here, and I should be able to run the same command. It should complete successfully. The reason it didn't before is, remember, we're part of the users group and the administrators group, so we just had a user level shell. If I do this here, you see it completes successfully, and I can even read that file as well. So there you go. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one just to clean it up. Um, oops. You actually do that with the del command in Windows, and now we've cleaned that up. And going back to the elevated command prompt, I'll also show you you know, if we look in the test user folder to see the permissions on that, we can see that the administrators have read, write, system has read, write, but only the test user out of all the users has read and write, uh, basically full control on this directory. So my self-made user, if I wasn't in this elevated command prompt, my self-made user does not have access uh, to even read it or anything like that. So if I ran the same command over over here in this shell, what you should see is that it would fail. And I'll show you what it looks like if you don't even have permissions to see the permissions at all, which is gonna happen on the self-made shell here, just to confirm to you, I am the self-made user here, not an elevated prompt here. So if I run this, I see access is denied, error getting security uh, for this folder here. So I can't even, in this case, I can't even see it. So if you do see an error like this, you can assume that you don't have any permissions, any read permissions or anything on this folder. So if we modify this, let's just play around with the uh, with the folder here. So if I go into properties, security, see you must have read permissions to view the properties of this object. But if I click advanced, I can actually use the UAC to um, elevate to administrator here because I am... I do have that level of access. And let's say self-made. All right, we're going to add self-made to here. So select principle, self-made. And we could say, we could have it checked just to make sure. Boom, that's the full thing here. You have the host name, backslash, user account, hit OK. And we're going to give ourselves full control just for uh, the purposes of this demo, right? So boom, now you see full control, self-made user added here. Apply and there you go. Just click through, just, just go ahead and click through on that. And there we go. So now after we click through all of that, let's just go ahead and rerun this. And now we see that we have read and write on here. So I I can actually go into that user's folder. But of course, this is not normally a privilege escalation thing you can do because it did require us to have elevated access. I'm just showing you guys the permissions here and how if we change the permissions, what it looks like from the command prompt here. But now that we do have these permissions, I could actually go into the test user folder. I can I have list permissions, right? So that's why I'm able to list all the files and folders here. I have write access, right? So I can create a file, right? Test.txt. I can create it. I can read that file because I have read access as well. I can even modify that file. So if I say, we're going to add an additional line to that, I can do that, right? I can modify the file. Uh, oops. And this access did apply recursively as well, by the way. So I can go into like say the documents folder, list the files there uh, and create files and, and all that if I wanted to see and delete them, modify them, whatever. So this actually does like the way we did it does apply recursively as well. But if we wanted to confirm that we, we can also do that. 
So if we want to say, okay, well, what's our, what's our permissions on say, uh, what's our permissions on say the downloads folder? And let me get into the directory where that binary is located. There's one in documents. And we can see that we have the full control on that as well. So yeah, hopefully that helped demystify the whole permissions thing in Windows. What are the different permissions? How can we check them and enumerate them? And how does making a change somewhere, how does that affect the output? And hopefully that gives you a better picture. And if you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section below and definitely check out the technical content on the screen right now if you want to get into some more learning and just keep on learning. And I'll see you guys right over there.